What is up YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance Crew, and you are watching DaVinci Reacts. Today I have another reaction for you guys. This video was brought to me by Honest Trailers. Uh, Honest Trailers is a YouTube channel that does uh, parody movie trailers for uh, blockbuster movies that were com or coming out at the time, or movies in the past that, you know, deserves uh, Honest Trailers. Now, I will have a link for their channel at the end of this video right around here. The last 30 seconds or so you click on it it'll take you to the channel you can subscribe watch the videos thumbs up things like that um and i will have a link for the original video as well if you haven't seen this video be sure to watch the original before you watch my reaction if you don't feel like watching the video twice uh something i recommend to help both me and the original channel out would be to right click the original link open it in a new window or a new tab if you can um, play the original video, but put it on mute and have it playing in the background while you watch this. Uh, once my video is over, their video will be over as well. So you'll be given both videos a view and it will go a long way to helping us collect ad revenue and, uh, continue to make the <laughs> videos that we all enjoy or that you all enjoy or hopefully enjoy because you could thumbs down this video and you know, it goes a long way to helping. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead and check this out see what it has to offer. There's a lot of stuff that could have been done right in the uh, Rise of Skywalker. I still liked it slightly better than Last Jedi, but they're still both heaping dumps of garbage fire. Like, it, it's bad. <laughs> the, the sequel trilogy was not good. Very well shot, very well acted, but the story and was just horrible. Let's go ahead and check this out. From Colin Trevorrow, until someone saw the Book of Henry, and the director who's never seen a landing he couldn't not stick, <laughs> comes the epic conclusion to The Force Awakens. Star Wars Episode 7.5, The Rise of Skywalker. I got a bad feeling about this. The Last Jedi asked you to forget everything you knew about Star Wars. So when some fans threw the kind of fit usually reserved for ethics and games journalism, Disney panicked and tried to mash the pieces back together in this hollowed out shell of a trilogy that's missing any consistency in its plot, themes, or characters. Unless you fill in the blanks on Twitter, read all the novels, yeah. and happen to be running some Fortnite squads with the boys during the crossover event. The day of victory is at hand. The day of revenge. The day of the Sith. Oh, that's what the dead speak was referencing. Fortnite. Just like how Return of the Jedi <laughs> revealed the second Death Star in Root Beer Tapper. <laughs> <laughs> Is that when true, or was that them, The fake. resistance was down to its last gasp, and the First Order reigned supreme. Now, stuff has happened, and the resistance is- Did you know that was supposed to be Mustafar? Supreme, now- Oh, I'm trying to stop it on time. Oh, stuff has happened. Yeah, this is supposed to be Mustafar. You know, the lava planet that Anakin and Obi-Wan fought on at the end of uh, episode three? This is supposed to be the same planet. What the hell happened? So so trees can... I mean, yeah, I get the trees are on fire and stuff, but the fact that they're there means that the trees had to have grown at some point. Unless these trees are like billions of years old and the planet wasn't always lava. How did they... Like, what? What? <laughs> and the resistance is back to fighting strength. While the First Order is taking loans from the rich old grandpa they don't call anymore. They'll strike the dark build that army with the only character left on the rotting carcass of the original trilogy. Palpatine. Or a clone of him that's like rotting away and Snoke is also a clone and he's being pickled? I don't know. Not super clear. The Emperor is enacting the same plan he had last time. Troll a young Jedi into striking him down. Strike me down and your journey towards the dark side will be complete. Yeah. Strike me down and my spirit will pass into you. And when that fails, hit him with the old zap hands. <laughs> But luckily, the same Luke Skywalker who bailed in this whole mess also left a scavenger hunt to stop him, sending our heroes running to find the thingy. The location of MacGuffin the wayfinder has been inscribed upon this dagger. That leads to the other 
thingy. The Emperor's Wayfinder is in the Imperial Vault. That leads to the bad guy. She's going to Exegol. She's showing us how to get there. While the First Order keeps sending them running whenever some character growth is about. She was showing them how to get to Exegol. Wasn't the point of Exegol that because of that weird cloud of energy that was floating around the planet, you couldn't get to it? It wasn't the fact that you couldn't find it. It was the fact that you couldn't get there. There was like a certain, the Wayfinder kind of like, I'm not sure. I guess it was, I have no idea how that shit worked. Like, was there a specific area on the planet that you can get past that cloud? Or was there like a certain area in the clouds that it was like a a tunnel where there was like, you wouldn't get hurt by the cloud or what? Cause like, what the fuck does a map have? Like, for example, if you go, like, let's say there's a city and it's just like surrounded by water, just surrounded by water. How the hell is getting a map that shows you how to get to the city going to help you get around the water? I, like, I didn't really think about that till just now. Like, how exactly do they get on the planet? There's this cloud that's keeping things from getting in there. But somehow you're able to get in there because you found a, a map. <laughs> Unless the little device allows you to, to get through the cloud and not get hurt. In which case, how did the other ships get onto the planet? Did all of them have MacGuffins? about to happen there's an incoming destroyer we gotta go now Ben, we're about to be cooked we gotta go they're coming Greg, come on. Come on. Come on. you know i've been thinking a lot about this film and the biggest issue it has at its core is oh no tie fighters everybody scram all the new characters you still barely know after three movies have returned like poe who i guess was a smuggler at some point adam driver did a good job in running trilogy, spice though. completing his arc from han solo type to just Han Solo, yeah. Finn, who's still fighting against all odds to keep himself in the movie. I need to go alone. We go together. We're all in this. We gotta go after her. Run! No! What was he planning Maz on doing? Kanata, who snatched a medal out of <laughs> Leia's cold dead hands just to please some 40 year old fanboys. These poor schmucks, whose stories must have been cut for time. Kylo Ren, continuing the Skywalker tradition of being a genocidal death cultist who's redeemed by a single act of good. Yeah. And Rey, <laughs> who's taken Luke's X-Wing, his lightsaber, his book collection, possibly his childhood home, and his last name. Rey who? Rey Skywalker. Yeah. Huh. Was Rey playing the long game? Because I think Luke just got talented Mrs. Ridley. <laughs> Don't like the newcomers? Don't worry, no one is ever really gone. Rejoin your old pals 3PO, Chewie, Luke, Leia, Han, and Lando, who are so sidelined at this point that one of them is fake memory wiped. Memory restoration complete. One of them fake dies. He's <laughs> alive. One of them thinks Last Jedi was for fake fans only. A Jedi's weapon deserves more respect. One of them dies from causing the fake death of her son. One of them died two movies ago and is so over this franchise, he wouldn't even get a haircut to cameo as a memory. <laughs> and one of them is alive and well enough to seemingly hit on his own daughter. Well, let's find out. Didn't know that's who Janna was supposed to be? It was in the Rise of Skywalker visual companion book, idiot. You should have been reading that in between rounds of Fortnite. <laughs> you call yourself a Star Wars fan. <laughs> so strap in for a conclusion that brings so much new to the franchise. From the new force powers that would have really come in handy for Qui-Gon Jinn. No! To hammering it home that all these dead stormtroopers were actually kidnapped children. Harvest more of a galaxy's young. To finally seeing the Knights of Ren do absolutely nothing than go out like a bunch of weak ass punks. <laughs> and mercifully break. Close your eyes. Visualize the fight between Kylo or the Knights of Ren and Kylo. And the the throne room scene. In the last, uh, the last Jedi with the red guards, Kylo and Rey. Is there any difference? Like, do the do the Knights of Ren do anything more than the red royal guards did in that last Jedi fight? No. Brings the new Star Wars cinematic era to a close with a sloppily constructed, hastily executed mess that managed to do the impossible. 
Unite fans who loved The Last Jedi and fans who hated The Last Jedi by pleasing none of them. It's on fire! Yeah. Mm -hmm. The whole thing's on fire! Starring... Oh, we're using our made-up names. Then I am Rey Skywalker. Hucked Finn. Narco Polo. Gentle Ben. Use the Force, me. The mm -hmm. only consistent character across all nine films. Participation yeah. trophies. Don't force so hard, you'll end up just like your brother. An old man wearing the same outfit he had in his 20s. Cut off my mane! The Rocketeer, Rolling James Dio. Tony Sith cloned this in a cave! Bland Moff Tarkin, a rose by any other name would get to speak. <laughs> How can I be a mechanic? I have no arms. Darth Sibelius, you know what's cooler than one Captain Phasma? Six Captain Phasmas. And Ray's dramatic reveal face. Star Wars Episode 9, The Last Star Wars. For a while at least, they really need to think this through. You know, I'm starting to think it's a bad idea for one studio to make every big movie. I was cybernetically engineered to pilot a spacecraft. I was cybernetically engineered to be a douchebag. What'd you do to the droid? What'd you do to the Falcon? Falcon's a lot better in shape than he is. bb 8s not on fire. What's whole... left of him isn't on fire. On your left. Us, Look at this. <laughs> Wash your hands. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. There they are, all standing in a row. <laughs> Who you calling a cootie queen? You lent liquor. I'm sorry for peeing during be a man. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, the. The Star Wars series is on serious, like, life support right now. The only thing saving Star Wars is the projects around the main story. So, things like Rogue One, uh, Solo, the games, like, Fallen Order. Uh, like, those are the things that are, that are keeping Star Wars alive right now. The Mandalorian, um... Because if it was just the movies by themselves, like imagine if this was like the like the seventies, and this sequel trilogy was the thing that came out, it Star Wars would be dead right now. <laughs> it would be one hundred percent dead. Um, I, I hated a lot of the sequel trilogy, mainly because of how bad they tried to piggyback off of the uh, two previous trilogies, like. The original or the prequel trilogy didn't piggyback this hard off of the sequel trilogy. Even though they were supposed to be a story about the same characters, they still had differences. <laughs> Anakin still was very different than Darth Vader. Uh, he was different than Luke. He wasn't just a photocopied version of Luke. Like, Rey is supposed to be a whole new character, yet she is almost a carbon copy of Luke Skywalker. To the point where they got her using the same weapon, they got her using the same ship, they got her using the same uh, planet, damn near. Like, her, her planet looks exactly like Tatooine. Her, uh, like, it, oh my goodness. Like, everything about it was just so freaking unoriginal. Like, it's just, oh man. Like, I hated Ray's character. Don't get me wrong. I, Daisy Ridley, she played this character the best she... I don't have a problem with the acting. The acting was good. Like, that's something that people tend to like assume, like, because you don't like something, you, like, just hate everything about it. Like, no. Ray was good. Finn was good. Even as far as, like, characters are concerned, they could have been good. Like, I can see Ray's character working. It's just, give her something to make her original... And give her an actual hero's journey. Like, don't just have her where she just has... Like, Ray is like a cheat code. Everything... Like, she had everything unlocked from day one. And it's like... Whether it was her ability to use the Jedi mind trick. Whether it was her... 
ability to use a lightsaber, like all that stuff. Like the very second she like learned about it, she was a master, it, and it made no sense. Like, show me her getting used to the powers, learning how to develop it. Um, I would have liked to have seen her use a, a double sided lightsaber, because the fact that they started off with the staff. It makes sense that she would be used to using a weapon like a staff. So give her a staff-like weapon. Give her a pole saber. Give her a double-sided lightsaber. We haven't seen that at all in the movies. Um, only real Jedi that I know of that uses a uh, dual-sided lightsaber in Star Wars is Bastila Shan, and she is a freaking beast. <laughs> you could have made a movie about her. Um... I believe uh, Satil Sean also uses a double-sided lightsaber. Like either way, oh, that's another thing. You could have made Ray part of that lineage, and then because people probably don't know that uh, who the Shans are without like already being Star Wars fans, you could have made an entire new set of movies related to the old Republic era and explaining who Bastila Sean and all of them are, like. You had an ability to take a movie, develop it so it makes money, and then branch out to explain other parts of Star Wars to make even more money. You could have made an entire extended universe around the Old Republic era because of how many legendary figures and characters and stuff there are. Like that's almost like an that's like Marvel cinematic. That's like Marvel's universe in and of itself. All the stuff you could have done with Darth Malak and Darth Magus and Darth Revan, like the 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 Sith Emperor, like I said, Bastila Shaw, like all these characters. There was so much that could have been done with it. You could have made a movie about each individual one of them too. Like let let the story be about Darth Revan and you know him forgetting his past and then doing what Star Wars or what George Lucas did, making a prequel trilogy at some point later that talks about what Darth Revan was and how he became dark and the whole time the original trilogy you were watching you saw Darth Revan like becoming a Jedi master and it's like oh shit he actually was a Sith Lord and he lost his memory and then that's where the the original trilogy started where he was trying to like on a good path but he was actually a bad guy before and he that changed like there was so much you could have done with it and you would have never had to have touched the Skywalker story. You never would have had to have retconned it. You would never would have had to have like butchered it by killing off the character. Like none of that. You could have never touched it and still made an amazing story that could have expanded into dozens of other movies. But you got lazy and tried to piggyback off of George Lucas. And when you realized that you weren't doing anything original, your idea of doing something original was killing off all the characters so that we didn't have like a continued story with them and we were forced to follow your storyline only to try to haphazardly fix your problem your, your issues by then it was too late like how could you have screwed this up so bad this is wwe levels of of inept <laughs> like it's, you just dropped the ball so damn hard oh man oh boy i like I said, there was so much you could have done, but it's like, I don't know. You were thinking short term as opposed to long term. Like I could have made an entire extended universe around Star Wars and never once touched uh, the Skywalkers or the Palpatines or whoever else. Uh, there, There's so much air you could have tackled. First of all, I would have started off with the Old Republic. I would have done everything in that, and then I would have moved on to something more modern in Star Wars. Like there are like fifty movies you could have made about the Old Republic era, and ten of them would have been dedicated towards one bad guy. So it would like the original movies would have been about Darth Malak, and then towards the end of that movie, you would have discovered the history of Darth Revan, and the next ten movies would have been about his journey, and then. I would have moved on to Darth uh, Magus or Magnus and did 10 movies about him. And then like you got the, 
Like you, you have the the Sith trio with Darth Treya and uh, Darth Nihilus and Darth Sion. Like there are so many things you could have done. Why? You could have taken parts from the extended universe and reintroduced Cal Katarn and Jada Skywalker and like so many other. God damn it! How did you drop the ball so bad? I haven't cringed this hard since I watched the Inbetweeners. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh man. Whatever. I'm Devon Da Vinci. Hopefully you've just been a little more enlightened. Leave your ideas in the comment section about what you think would have worked for Star Wars. I want to hear it. Please let me know. <laughs> I would have loved to hear your ideas of what you would have done with the Star Wars universe. Just like what I said. Where would you have started? What would your storylines have been? Like, let me know. Let them know. <laughs> Hopefully they can still fix this. But, uh, yeah, that's it. I, I look forward to seeing you guys in the future. I'm going to give you the deuces, and I'm signing out. So I will see you guys very soon, actually. Um, I'm going to give you the deuces, and that's it. Deuces.